Hi everyone, this is Brittany from Teach Me ABA, and today we're going to continue on our Task List 5 series. Now if you've been watching, we started all the way from A-1, and right now we're going to do C-9, so let's get into it. So C-9, we're going to be discussing selecting a measurement system given the dimensions of behavior. Perhaps the most important aspect of measuring behavior within our field is going to be selecting the measurement system that's going to best convey the change in your target behavior, but also how it will be observed and also how it will be recorded based on the fundamental and measurable dimensional qualities that we discussed in our earlier post. So if you need a little bit of a refresher, you can start start from C-1. So when we select the most appropriate measurement system, our data provides information that accurately shows how the behavior occurs and hopefully it shows the change within the communities that we serve. Now there is a discussion um, about the balance that we need to attain when deciding which measurement system we're going to use. I'm going to base it off of the Cooper, Heron, and Heward third edition. So let's go ahead and talk about that. First off, you want to answer a very important question when it comes to your target behavior. Okay, is it observable or is it not observable? So if the answer is yes, the target behavior is observable, then you need to consider whether it is discrete and countable. So if it is discrete and countable, then you want to consider you, your next step in the process, which is whether or not the observer has enough resources to count each instance of that particular behavior. If your observer does not have enough resources to count each behavior, then you would need to consider if the observer has the resources to continuously monitor the, monitor the behavior um, for a brief period of time. And so if this is a yes, then you want to consider partial interval recording. If the answer is no, where they don't have that brief period of time, then you want to choose a momentary time sampling system. Now, if you don't remember the difference between those two and you want some examples, well, look no further because we actually already made that video for you. That's going to be C-7. So you want to go back there and refresh your memory a little bit if you need to. With that said, let's talk about situations where the observer has the resources to count every instance of behavior. You need to then consider if the behavior occurs at any time. So if the answer is no, then you want to use event recording, so that way you can use a percentage of occurrence. But what if your answer is yes, so the behavior can occur at any time? So in other words, it's a free operant behavior. Then you want to go ahead and ask yourself if the dimension of the behavior is a primary or secondary concern. Not only is it a primary or secondary concern, but you also have to consider if it's the most aspect of it is important as far as conveying the effects of a treatment. Okay, so if you've gotten this far, now we're going to talk about what happens if you have a target behavior that is not observable, or you have to consider the fact that the behavior does not occur when other people are present. So now you have to consider, does the behavior produce a measurable or physical change in the environment? If your answer to that question is a yes, then you want to go ahead and use permanent product measure of recording. Should your answer be no, then you might want to consider thinking outside the box with your program manager or BCBA uh, because you have to consider whether you're going to be using an indirect measure, meaning you're going to ask a questionnaire of the caregiver or a covert observation where you're going to have to get a little bit sneaky and you're going to have to watch that individual without them knowing. Or you want to consider corresponding behaviors that, have, that you can observe that would help you get answers to that target behavior. So with this helpful decision-making model, we'll be able to ensure that we're selecting the measurement system that accurately depicts the behavior and the effects of treatment, which overall is going to help ensure that the communities that we serve are gonna thrive, are gonna be successful in their lives. So I hope you have enjoyed this. This is C-9. If you have any questions, please go ahead and let link them below. Um, as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Do, do, do.